tonight I'm going to give you 10 steps. The same 10 steps that I've been using over and over for the last 30 years to bring my products to market. But I do it very differently. You see, what I do is I, I rent ideas to companies. That's right, I rent them to companies. And if they like those ideas, they take them to market, and every time they sell one, I get paid. And I really like that, because I don't have to really do anything but just show them ideas. I can be creative. Well, I also have these same 10 steps in a book called One Simple Idea. I was contacted by McGraw-Hill about nine months ago, and they said, Steve, you've been teaching in inventors and entrepreneurs for the last 10 years. Would you write a book? And I said, yes. And they said, would you give away everything that you've been teaching that I charge $1,000 for in a book that's $14.95? And I said, what are you, nuts? <laughs> and I did exactly that. I'm going to go over these 10 steps as fast as I can. There's a lot of information. There's no way I'm going to be able to go over everything, but I'm going to try. When I first started out, I just made things and sold them at street fairs and county fairs and state fairs, wherever I could sell things. I would bring out a table, I'd make things out of fabric and take them out and I would just sell them. And I learned one important lesson, it's one of these lessons I'm gonna teach you tonight. You've gotta to find out if your product has value very quickly. You see, if I didn't sell my ideas on a Saturday, I didn't eat, I didn't pay the rent. So I learned how to find out very fast does my idea have what it takes? And how to do it where you're not spending a lot of money. Because at the end of the day, it takes a lot of ideas. It just does. Now, sometimes you can come up with one idea and hit a home run. That doesn't happen that often. So you need to think about in terms of, I might have to come up with a few. So if I'm going to spend years and years and years working on one idea, maybe not a good idea. So something my father told me early on. He said, Steve, if you ever want to create great wealth, three things need to happen. Number one, you don't want to use these. Number two, you need to find something that doesn't require your presence. And number three, you need to find a multiplying effect. So I came up with the method, the 10 steps I'm going to share with you, that you can test the market, don't spend a lot of money, and see if your ideas has legs. So step number one, it's really simple. Do a Google product search. Prior art search, and then if you don't see anything, or if you do, who cares? <laughs> is it selling on the shelf? If it's not, I go for it. It's as simple as that. All right. Step number two, invent for the marketplace. How many people come up with ideas because they see a problem? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Well, you do it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. I go down to the marketplace. I let them tell me what it wants. I find sleeping dinosaurs. I find opportunity at the marketplace. Because if you look hard enough, it will scream at you what it's looking for. Sometimes if you invent, not outside the box, but right next to the box is what's important. It's the little changes, it's not the big changes. You think too big, they'll never get done. It'll take you years. In fact, I'll come back in 10 years and you'll still be talking about it. You don't want that to happen, it's the small changes. If you ever think about starting a business, do this, number one. Do the math, do your business plan, find someone else who's already done it, and really look further out. If you're gonna have a garage business, or you're gonna play with the big boys, just do the math. And if you wanna risk, raise money, take so many years, be my guest. But really understand the game that's being played. A lot of people don't. I don't know what you can do, do a hybrid. Start your company up, get it going, do some sales, then you can take it to a company that's got better distribution, sell it to them. So there's different ways of doing it. But find out what, what really fits you, right? Because I love just ideas. But I want everybody else to do the work for me. I like to find a product that someone hasn't polished up. I like to find an industry that's been around that just needs a little bit of updating. Because I already know the market exists. It takes a lot less risk. That's what I like to do. OK, step number three. How do you pick the winners? How do you pick the? If you have all these ideas, how do you know which one to work on? Well, it's really easy for me. I find a product that I know I can manufacture at a price point that will fit in the right category at retail. Can it be manufactured and what price point? And also, does it have wow? Your product has to have a little wow. 
Just a little while. If it doesn't have a wow, you might have a problem. Okay? And the last thing I like to find, I like to find, I, I, I like to, if I'm working on an idea, I want it to have a huge, huge market. Because if you're going to make money, you might as well make a lot of money. It's going to take the same amount of work. All right? Those are the three things. And guess what? No one has a crystal ball. All testing you got. So I'll roll the dice. But I'm not going to wait a year to find that out. I'm going to find that out within a week. Because I'm going to show someone my idea, and they're going to tell me thumbs up or thumbs down. In fact, I'm going to show probably 10, 20 people. And I'm going to get a very quick read. They like it or they don't. That's going to tell me how much more work I have to do. Sometimes I come up with a product. I don't even know if it will work. But I want to know if someone wants it first. I'll figure out how to make the thing. Uh, do you really need a patent? I don't think so anymore. And I'll tell you the reason why. Ideas come and go really quick now. And it's interesting that I'm saying this, because I have 13 patents. That's how I make a living. But I don't think you need them anymore. Because I think a lot of us don't have big ideas. I think we have small ideas. But if you have big ideas, you need perceived ownership. That's what patents are. So what do you, what do you need? You need, the, you need the perception of ownership. Right? And you get that with a provisional patent application. How many people have heard of that nice tool? It's a beautiful tool. It's not perfect. Nothing is. If you want perfect, stay home. It's just not perfect. But it's a great tool. It gives you one year to put patent pinning the fish off the end of the pier to see if you get a bite. That's all it really is. I want to see if I get a bite. If I get a bite, I'll do something else. I'm, I'll call my attorneys. Maybe I have to file something. I want, I want a fish. And provisional patent application gives me that. Because I have a patent pending, and they know that the product's going to go to market fast and come out pretty fast, it's first to market. It's speed to market. Can you imagine a group of engineers, an idea comes in, and they're all talking about, you know, that great idea, I think we'll just steal it from that guy. <laughs> How well would that go over an organization? It wouldn't go over very well at all. You know, but here's the tool that we have today. It's the internet. You used to be able to tell 10 people, 10,000, now 10 million. Three mommy bloggers had P&G so worried because they were blogging about Pampers just the other day. You guys, you don't understand. We have a voice. So don't be afraid of it. They're afraid of us. We have the power. You just don't know it yet. Because we always think we're small and they're big. No, we got the tools of the USPTO. And the PR is a nightmare for those guys to do something funny. Now, here's, here's the thing you have to realize. They've got a bunch of smart guys in the back. And they're developing a lot of ideas. And most likely, they might have developed yours. Good chance. But no one has all the great, no one has all the ideas. All right. Okay. All right. How many of you like make, building prototypes? Raise your hand. Don't we love building them? We love it. We love it. We love it, we love it so much we can't stop. We love it so much, we'll work on that, but we won't work on marketing and sales. <laughs> but you gotta put a different hat. You gotta put the, the prototype hat on, the protection hat on, the marketing, the sales. You gotta put all those hats on. But no, we, we like the certain hats because it's, we're comfortable. You guys, it's good to get your hands nice and sweaty. You know, you're alive! If not, you're not. The only time you're in the game is when you pick up the phone calling a company. If you haven't started calling companies, you're not even in the game. Not even close. All right, prototypes. I've sold things without prototypes. Now, the only time I think you need a prototype is if you need proof of concept. Does it really work? So, simple. Cannibalize an idea, put it on YouTube, password protect it, and show before and after. Have wow. Here's a problem. Here's a solution. Don't put music to it. Make it a little rough. Companies like that, because they're going to come up and they're going to polish it up, right? That's a powerful tool. But if you're building prototypes forever and ever, and to re you know, re reworking it, realize they're going to change it anyway. Because you know what they really want is a benefit. They want the wow. What are you doing for me? Because you're not selling prototypes, you're not selling patents, you're selling benefits at the end of the day. All right, next one. You need to be able to summarize your idea into one sentence. This is not easy to do. One sentence, emotional. 
and test it on somebody. Meet someone for the first time and say, what do you do? Well, I've got this product that does this. And so they just go, what? Or, or they get it. So work on that. Now, next is your cell sheet. It's the most important tool you'll use. A cell sheet's like a billboard when you're driving down the freeway, you look up, you see it five seconds later, you know what it is. That's what a, a cell sheet does for you. Do not put the kitchen sink into a cell sheet. I have a tendency to do that. Do not do that. If you want to put more information, put a cover letter, all right? But your cell sheet's an ad, like a magazine ad. It's quick, to the point, it has power. It's going to act, it's a teaser. They're going to say, I want to know more. That's what your cell sheet does. Because I just go online, get someone on the phone call, we'll talk about how to get into the company. So I get on the phone call, are you on a computer, send you a PDF, whatever, it's right there, boom. Send it right over. And it either works or it doesn't that fast. And you will know it if it works. Because they're going to say, can you tell me a little bit more? Can I see more information? That's the way it works. So you sell sheet. One line, one line benefit statement, picture. Does it have to be a prototype? Does, yeah, maybe you take a picture of your prototype. Maybe have someone draw it for you as a student at the local college and save yourself some money. Right? Because you know what the sell sheet does? All it does for me is that when I show it to a company, tell me, do you like it? Are you interested? And if you don't get those green lights, maybe I go, hmm, what's not working? Because I want to get green lights always. How, am I, how many people like to call companies and, and get on the phone and talk to people who don't know? How many people like to do that? <laughs> because you should never try to sell on the phone. You need to have your product sell itself. Now, when I make the sales calls to companies, two things happen. I make a list. Who do I call? I go down to the store, study the marketplace. I, and I, I realize, where's my product going to be? It's going to be right there. Can I call all these companies? Very <coughs> good. Pretty simple. Call them all. And I really don't want to call the big guy first. And the big guy's not going to take my idea anymore. Big guy, big companies don't take ideas from smaller guys. They, they end up letting you do all the work and they buy it later. Yeah. Right? Small guys can't do anything with it. You want the mid-sized guys. People that you want to call at a company, you don't want to call the president. That's ridiculous. Maybe it's a small company, maybe, but most likely the president. You know what the president's going to do or someone really high up? They're just going to show it down to someone lower and go, you do this. You know who you want to talk to? You want to find your Superman. You want to find that one person in the company that's going to take ownership of your idea. That one person in the company that's going to get promoted. Now that person is most likely going to be in the marketing department. Okay? And it's going to be a product manager. They don't care where a good idea comes from. Maybe someone in sales. I never talk to someone in product development. Because they, you know, it's kind of doing their job. Legal, run as fast as you can. <laughs> never works out legal. So this is what I'll do. I'm going to give you my script that I use every time. Hi, my name is Stephen Key. I'm calling the operator, by the way. Hi, my name is Stephen Key. I'm a product developer. I am never an inventor. They have this wild imagination of what a winner is. Hi, my name is Stephen Key. I'm a product developer with Stephen Key Design. Ooh, sounds good already. Sounds like I'm in business. And I would like to submit ideas to your company. Can you help me? Three magic words. Can you help me? Operator's job is to direct traffic. And they don't know what to do with that call. <laughs> But I know where I want to go. I'm in control. I want to go to someone in marketing or someone in sales. So, can I, and they might go, well, I'm not quite sure. What's your name again? Stephen Key? Stephen, I'm not quite sure where to send you. And I said, well, how about someone that handles your small tools, like your hammers? How about someone in the marketing department? And who would that be? Oh, great. Let me connect you. Cool. Now, imagine that the marketing manager is never going to pick up that phone because no one picks up the phones anymore. So you have to call back a dozen times at least. And I never leave a message. Because then they will definitely not call you back. <laughs> so I like to ambush them with my one-line benefit statement. So I call back, hi, 
My name is Stephen Key, I'm a product developer, and guess what? I have a hammer that hits nail straight every time. Guess what? Hi, my name is Stephen Key, I'm a product developer, and I have a label innovation that adds 75% more space. Can I send you a sell sheet? Can I send you more information? By the way, are you on a computer right now? Oh, you are. Sure, please, go to this website real quick. Boom, oh, there it is, boom. Now I'm in. Document your conversations, but do it in a clever way. Next steps, okay? Don't be so obvious that you're documenting all this, so if anything happens, you can call them later on the carpet for it. Cutting a great deal, this is my favorite part. Uh, the reason why, I like to find the weaknesses of companies. And once I find their weakness, I go for it. Because they're gonna tell me their weaknesses. Because I don't think these guys are that smart. So when a company, when I, give, when I send my idea to a company, they've got it, they're looking at it, I'm gonna get this call. And the call is basically, Steve, you know, kind of interesting thing you have here. We're kind of evaluating it. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to manufacture it. I'm looking to license it and collect a royalty. Well, what royalty rate would you like? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I give you a royalty rate, I need to understand your business a little bit better. Because it amazes me that people just pull out a royalty rate out of thin air. People do it all the time. They ask me, what's the best royalty rate? They just pull one out of the air. There's no magic here, and there's no guessing. This is what you need to know. You need to ask me about their business. Now, the two things I want to find out, how many units they think they can sell, and what is the wholesale price going to be? Because that's where I collect my royalty on. Right? Can we do that? I collect my royalty basically on the wholesale price, and how many units are going to sell. I can determine how much money I'm going to make. Pretty simple. But he's not going to give me that information. So that's how I'm going to get it. Hey, Tom, uh, you know, I need to understand your business a little bit better, but because I, like I like to come back with you with a proposal, a term sheet. But before that, I need to understand your business a little bit better. Well, what do you need, Steve? Well, how many stores do you currently sell them now? Um, well, we're in Walmart, you know, we're in uh, Kmart, so you're in mass market, big box, yeah. I might say, gee, Tom, uh, do you do grocery stores, uh, drug stores? No, we don't do those. Oops, move that out. Okay, I'm not going to license it to there. Move it out, just found a weakness. Here, oh. So, Tom, do you sell convenience stores? Oh, yeah, we do convenience. Oh, which one? So, oh, like 7 Lemon Target. Oh, let's put it down. Perfect. Now, I can Google later how many stores there are. Because I'm going to ask you next what territories do you, do you want that license in? Territories? You know, like, you know, I mean, do you want an exclusive or non exclusive? Well, we want an exclusive. Oh, let me write that down. I'm putting value down, I'm breaking it down to value. Because I'm going to show them how many they paid. Exclusive. Well, what territories do you want that in, Tom? Well, what do you mean, Steve? Well, do you, do you want U.S., Canada, Mexico? Do you, do, you, do you need business outside, international? Steve, we want a worldwide pack. I mean, worldwide rights. A worldwide exclusive rights to your idea. Fantastic, Tom. Let me write that down. Okay, so you're in Germany? Well, no, we're not. Over here. I'm, I'm trying to find where those holes are. Because I'm not going to license to them with the holes. I might, but I'm not going to give them to them. That's, that's playing chips. I can play with those. I can play with this stuff over here later. So I'm just having a conversation, right? I'm not negotiating now. I am. <laughs> know it. That's why I have to do it and not an attorney to do it. Because these are business decisions. This is my money. And I care about my money more than any attorney will ever care about my money. So then I come back and say, well, that's great. Thank you very much. I, go, I Google, I get online, I get all the numbers, and start plugging in royalty rates, 2%, 5%, 10%. And I have a chart. So I know exactly how much money I'm going to make. If it's 10,000 stores, 20,000 stores, 50,000 stores, 3%, 5%, 10%. I know exactly how much money I'm going to make. So I know the difference if I, if I ask for 7, it gives me 4. What am I really making? 
Maybe I could even take three. Maybe if it was on a Coke that does a billion Cokes a day, it could be about that small. <laughs> <laughs> know your numbers, right? You have to know your numbers. If not, you're just guessing. Never guess. There's no guessing here. All right, so now I go to a term sheet. It's really simple. I put a term sheet. I send it over to them with a proposal. And it has it broken down. Territory. Worldwide. Excluding Germany. Because okay, I know what you just said. Territory, channels of distribution, mass market, you know, C-stores. I start listening. He might go, well, what about drugs? Well, you don't sell it in drug stores. You already told me. So I start breaking it down. Now, I never asked for an advance either. But I think you should get some money. But if I ask for an advance, it top loads the deal. And that's really awkward. So know what I ask the company to do? I ask them to pay for my patents. Because guess what? It's good for your business. Even exclusive. It protects your interest. And it's just good. I'm not going to go out and buy a new car and pay for my patents. If you ever get a contract, make sure you've got someone that has done this before. If not, you will lose. Matter of fact, experience is key. Mostly everything you do, right? This is no different. Always make sure in that contract you can always audit them. Also make sure in that contract any improvement you own. I don't even care about the royalties, really. I care about the minimum guarantees. Minimum guarantees is your performance clause. Minimum guarantees really mean that if they don't sell so many, you get your idea back. If you cut a deal without minimum guarantees, basically you give them rights and they don't have to make one. So it's really hard to license it to somebody else when you've already licensed it to somebody else. You know? So if they don't sell it, they hold on to it, it just diluted value in your idea. The minimum guarantees, the first year are really low. They're so low, it's ridiculous. And the reason why, I want them to start spending money. Share my interest. Yeah, you have to. Second year, a little bit higher. Third year, I punch them around between the eyes. <laughs> when you give your first pitch, I mean, when, when you put your royalty rate down and they ask you about it, always be firm. Always go higher than what you want because they're going to want a deal. Everybody does. You want a deal. Part of the negotiation. But when you throw that number out, don't ever speak afterwards. First person who speaks after loses. The last thing I want to talk about real quick is Inventor Notes. New website, put it up on Monday. Inventor Notes, you know what it is? It's a directory of who's who in the industry. We have people on the website that are experts, that answer questions. Take a look at it. We have stories. We're going to have an Inventor Showcase. This is your website. That's what it really is. It's everybody's website. And it's not going to be, there's no charge for any of it. It's absolutely free. It's my gift to the industry, period. It's called Inventor's Notes. Check it out. I think you'll love it. The other thing I want to say, the group, Inventor's this big group here, you need to stay involved. You need to find people who are thinking like you. Okay? And this is your group. This is your friends. And you need to share information. It's very, very important. And you need to come to this over and over again. And you need to learn and pass on the information to the next. It's all about passing on information. Help the next guy, the next guy, the next guy. Pass it, pass it on. And build a strong group. I know this group's been around for 28 years. It's a long time. So it's, it's working. It, it is working. And it will work. Remember, protection is this. You need to go this far. Protection is this much. Prototypes is this much. So you, know, you got all this way to go. So don't get caught up here. When we teach our 10 steps, the 10 steps is to get you to do it. And I don't care if you have a lousy idea. Just do the 10 steps. If you don't do the 10 steps, you could be sitting here for years. And that's ridiculous. You need to get the game today, tomorrow, the next day. Play the game. It's like playing baseball. You hit a home run, you gotta get the bat, right? right. It's very, very simple. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.